Hi guys, welcome to How to Build Your Own Rome. This is episode 13, and today we're going to be talking about Alan Sugar. So last week we spoke about Evan Carmichael from his book, Top 10 Rules of Success, and the week before that was Donald Trump, which was hilarious. Go and watch that one. Before that, Rob Moore. Before that, Rob Moore. Rob Moore. So we seem to have this thing going on where we offer value. Yep. And then we have a laugh. Little less value. <laughs> yeah, you? Little less. Little less value. As in none. So this um, one is going to be Alan Sugar. Okay. So we did, we did a fa- we did a quite sensible one last week, didn't we? Um, Ev- Evan, Carmichael's. Evan Carmichael, yeah, yeah, amazing guy. Um, and Alan, I mean, we're well, Lord Sugar. We have to call Lord him. Lord Sugar. Do we have to call him Lord Sugar? I don't have to. Do yeah, anything, do we? we don't I'm have sure to. I've been I, don't, I mean, what would what would he say if you didn't call him Lord Sugar? Do you reckon he'd get upset? I think, I think they're allowed to. They're What's your take hung, on him? Drawn, I like Alan Sugar. Hmm? From what I know of him, I don't no, but know I mean, no, what, what, what do you reckon he would say if you just went up to him and said, "Hi, Alan"? Oh, I think he'd pull your pants down, and punch you in the face. <laughs> Really? Yeah. What, in the middle of London, like in High Street or something? Down, punch. You okay. Can't, when you've got your cacks around your ankles, there's no way you can fight You can't that. even run, can you? No, you're too busy either trying to cover you. Have you seen that thing on the tube train? There's guys having a go at another guy, being really rude to him. He's on the tube train, and this other guy comes up. Instead of hitting him, he just pulls his trousers down. That'd do it. It's really funny. That would do it. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. So, yeah, we're going to talk about Alan Sugar. So, the first thing he's known for is Amstrad. So he designed. Uh, do you remember the old Amstrad? Computers? I had one. I can remember getting I've one got for a Christmas. Of it here. And it's got that big long. Uh, I could, well, it's an Amstrad four six four. I, 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 mean, I can remember it because it was like we had a. Um, it was a green monitor. Yeah. The monitor. The, I don't know why, but it was like green. Just the screen was green. Yeah. Everything about it, and that was a. I think they I had know, two colours. That was well, it was white or green, and this was green, and it was <laughs> yeah. like a technology breakthrough i don't know why but <laughs> green was better on your eyes maybe i don't know but anyway okay. green screen yeah big long computer keyboard with it. a tape deck on with the end of it, deck on it that never worked no you could you'd sit there for an hour waiting for a oh, game to load the game. and it got to the end of went syntax error yeah <laughs> you're like oh my god and now though isn't it funny that you'd sit there for an hour waiting for that making that horrible noise now if the internet takes three or four seconds to upload you we get really annoyed Yes, it's, it's a, <laughs> I actually get I actually get annoyed with computers now, Dave. My son's got a Xbox, and you put and you sort of expect these things to be instant nowadays. Yeah, I mean, why is it not instant? Yeah. Why do you have to put a disc in and wait for stuff to happen? <laughs> I mean, it's like surely technology has evolved from there, but you're still waiting for things to happen. And um, <laughs> I think it's life. <laughs> but, yeah. but people don't want to wait. No, this is the thing. We live in a world of it. we live in a world of instant everything. Mm. I want instant everything. When I, you know, if I phone order a pizza, if that's not here in twenty eight minutes, yeah, right, I'm not going to yeah. be happy. I'm yeah? starving to death. Yeah, yeah, I'll be yeah. dead. I think I will be dead. <laughs> Do you get here before I die? Yeah, that's, it should sound in yeah. delivery. We'll that's deliver it. before death. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We will deliver this to you before you starve to death, no matter where in the world you are. Yeah, yeah. even before the starving starts, we will get that pizza to you. And, and, we and that's why like everyone, that, everyone wants instant stuff. So this this old Amstrad, I mean, it wasn't really a breakthrough. I got to be honest. I don't even know why we had it. Yeah, why did you? you see, you don't seem the type to play computer games. No, it wasn't, no, 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 it wasn't. It wasn't games back. then. You didn't get games back then. What was it then? It was sitting typing stuff. So we used to get used to get a magazine once a week, and it'd have a thing in there you could write it'd it'd take about most of the week actually most of the week you'd be sitting there um line 10 go to i want to write to line 20 yeah and you'd sit there and you'd write out all this stuff and it it, it would take you all week you know in between school and sleep and you would just be sitting at your computer right get to the end and you'd obviously put a dot in the wrong place somewhere and it wouldn't work and then you'd spend the following week going through it line by line trying to find the error yeah and then eventually when it did work, a little man would run on one side of the screen, jump over a box, run off the other. And you'd go, yes! Yes! I then am you'd a get... programmer. <laughs> That's it. And then you yeah. get next week's magazine and you just start again. It's brilliant. And I can actually remember one time we... And I, you remember I was young, okay? Mm. I'm talking like a long time ago. I was very young. I had this magazine and we sat. I sat and wrote it. I used to do it every week, sit and write the program out and do it all. Yeah. I, got, I couldn't get it to work. Could no. not get it to work. And my mum actually got... Well, I got so annoyed with it in the end. My mum phoned the magazine up. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and it was like 8 o'clock in the evening. And she phoned the, mag- the number on the magazine, like helpline number. Yeah, it's a helpline. And, you know, you sort of... You, when you do something like that, you're always going to get one or two people. You're going to get the guy who owns the magazine or the cleaner. Yeah. And we got the guy who owns the magazine. Right. Who's the most helpful guy on the planet. Is he? So if you're listening... 40, yeah. 40 years later yeah. if you're listening it will be thanks for that yeah but um 
he went through and he knew his stuff and he was like, Did well, he? yeah, check this, check this, check this. And it was like, yeah, there it is. And it was just, I mean, literally, you only had to put one dot in the wrong place and yeah. nothing worked. I remember, I vaguely remember that. Mm. I think it was a little bit after that when I started playing computer games, but I do remember where Commodore 64 was the first mm. one we had. And Atari ST was another one we had. But I played games as a kid. Don't play them at all now. They're adults. No, I can't really be bothered, to I be can't, honest. I can't be bothered with games, TV or... Uh, yeah, anything yeah. like that, really. I mean, it just really doesn't matter. But anyway, yeah, so he but bought, yeah, he bought he, that out. Bought yeah. the Amstrad computer, done really well did. from it. Um, and then I'm assuming sure went bankrupt at some point. I think he actually did go bankrupt. Then he became the um, owner um, of Tottenham Hotspur. Is it owner? It's the chairman, chairman of Tottenham, chairman Hotspur. Tottenham Hotspur. I remember Hotspur. that. Yeah. Tottenham were good then. That was in 1991. <laughs> oh, he was 10 years. I didn't think he did 10 years. So he was the chairman of Tottenham Hotspur. So that's a big jump, isn't it, from, from doing computers to actually being in the football industry so he's done a lot of different things he's um as a media personality sugar is also known as a media personality due to his appearance in the print in the apprentice i think he was the main guy in the apprentice wasn't he yeah um, he was the guy who um said you're fired yeah yeah hey he's good he's i, I like him and um, what about him do you like oh, his personal life the wife of alan's wife of sugar is Anne simmons she's kept her surname i don't think she has well, she said the wife of sugar. She's Anne Lady Simmons. Sugar. She's not. <laughs> well, he's like Lord, isn't he? He's, um, she's Lady, she's lady, lady, lady Gaga. Sugar. Yeah, she's Lady Sugar. He's Lord Sugar. She yeah. kind of kept her surname. She can't be Lady Simmons, can she? Well, she, I don't know. She, on here it says Lady Simmons. No, sorry, it says Miss Simmons. So, yeah, um, interesting facts about Alan Sugar. So I like him. I like his kind of gruff. Oh, approach. I do. I yeah, yeah. He's hilarious. Yeah. And he's done, you know, his, his uh, yeah, definition of success is worth over a billion billion pounds yeah he's um, proper like English stuff. boy as well I mean we've mm. had, we've known people that have spoken with him haven't we was it Nick well Rob Moore's been on Rob stage Moore's been on stage yeah. with him um, Ryan Pinnock Ryan Pinnock um, who's the other guy who's been on stage with him who Nick does James. the events Nick James Nick James, does the events, Nick James. Yeah. so we know a few people have actually spoke with him I wonder what he's like in real life what do you think he's like do you think he's as gruff and like well, the actual I can't remember the guy's name who's the guy done the interview with him um, went out to America with him um, oh I can't remember, but he he in they done a um, documentary about a guy. Yeah, and really down to earth. Yeah, he just he gets up and goes cycling, and you yeah. know just. But yeah, obviously he walks into a shop and buys a twenty thousand pound push bike. Yeah, know, he does. Yeah, because he, he can. He can. There's gets no on his little private jet and flies wherever he wants to go because yeah. he you know doesn't really want to have to walk anywhere. Um, he's got his own security, so he doesn't even have to go through like the airport and security mm. with the mere mortals. Yeah, <laughs> he just drives up to his plane, gets on it, yeah, flies yeah. wherever he wants. So he, he, he wasn't bi built um, born rich. So Sir Alan was born in Hackney on um, in 1947. At the age of 13, he was already making money with his dad, um, more money than his dad, who was a tailor, by boiling beetroots. His first ever business was boiling beetroots. No, that's good. No. Do you need your beetroots boiled? Not today, but. If you do, take my card. <laughs> <laughs> Making ginger beer and selling ph photographic film to school friends. Now, to me, that, that sounds, sounds like <laughs> photographic <laughs> film. Sounds like pornography to me. <laughs> but hey, I mean, if boiling beetroot sounds like something as well, to be honest. Yeah, well. boiling beetroot sounds like a bit of a yeah, nickname yeah. or something. Um, yeah. And Making selling, selling photographic. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. making ginger beer is also rhyming slang. <laughs> <laughs> so we may have stumbled across a bit of um yeah you should have. And <laughs> read between the lines. So if we were to read between Make the lines up. and rewrite this, we could yeah. really, really diss a guy. Yeah, we could. But we I better not. Really, we better really not. Like I, him, I actually yeah. like him. I like what he's what he's done, yeah. how successful he's been, and how he how he lives his life. You know, he's um yeah, just yeah, doing really doing really well. And he is, although I think The Apprentice paints a really bad picture of him. I, I think admit. he's playing a character. Yeah. I think that's kind yeah, of like a wrestling hyped up version of him. It's not really him. I think it's him with the colours turned up. That's it. He's got. He's got to make a. He's got to make a series, isn't it? I wasn't yeah. ready to watch it, but that's. I don't think that's him. I don't think any of these people actually go on to work with him. To be honest, I think they probably. No, I don't. Probably just get given a hundred grand. Say, yeah, go yeah, and do something with it. Try and make, yeah. Have an office. There you go. Have that corner of the office. Here's hundred grand. If yeah. you just keep quiet for twelve months, yeah. and then twelve months time, you. You know, you're yeah, out. So exactly. Yeah. yeah, I don't think anything comes off. The back I don't know anybody. Who do, well, you never see him again, do you? And they're not seeing. No. Yeah. You know, in the next episode, it, he hasn't got one of them sitting next to him at the desk. No. So. No. 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 I, I, I mean, I've only watched a few episodes, but I would agree that. Yeah. So he, he does a lot for charity. He um, gives a lot of money away to Great Ormond Street, which I'm good, fond of. Good lad. Good lad. Um, uh, Hackney Empire. Mm -hmm. Um, is that still? I didn't know the Hackney Empire was still. Yeah. 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 Where's the Hackney Empire? It's a like a theatre, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. 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 Is that where you went a few months? 
Not for you, are they? No. No. I Why would I have gone there? I don't know. Jolly. Meet <laughs> meet meet Alan. <laughs> meet my mate Alan. <laughs> no, I think no. And no, Jewish no. care is the other one. All and right. then there's a big picture on my computer of a Chinese lady with massive knockers. <laughs> what? Where's that come from? I don't people know. can I see your computer actually. If, if, yeah. if you flick over to mine, people can see your screen. So be careful. Yeah. Be careful what comes up no, on your not. screen. I didn't put it there. It's, it's like halfway down an article about the Alan mm. Sugar for no reason. Um, but doesn't, you can't do it for doesn't, free. Doesn't, doesn't, um, doesn't Google is quite clever and sort of like um, like what, cookies and that sort of thing. Like. knows what you've been looking at. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Every time That's I type in added sugar, I've got to go for a bit of knockers. <laughs> after it's Asian charm. <laughs> Promise. No, uh, but so yeah, um, facts about Alan Sugar. Um, tech, tech, it says technology controversy. In February two thousand and five, Sugar predicted the iPod would be dead, finished, gone, kaput by the following Christmas in two thousand and five. The comment topped the poll by T three on the ten worst te- technology predictions ever. <laughs> so even Alan Sugar gets it wrong. Yeah. What did you learn from that? Well, it didn't nothing. happen yet. Going go into nothing. something different. Like, I don't remember saying I was hammered. <laughs> I'm saying a lot. I absolutely don't have a clue about saying that. So. Yeah, he said the iPod would be dead. But it kind of is now, though, isn't it? It is now. Well, I, I think I all these things. I mean, it's, it's like saying the um, it's like saying the Walkman's like dead, but it's not really. It's just evolved into an iPod, and the iPod's yeah. evolved into a phone. Phone, yeah. Basically, because I mean, this is this is uh, this is a iPod, a yeah. fo- camera. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. None, none of them have died. They've just evolved into something, something that else. we can have in our pocket, and yeah. it serves more than one purpose. Yeah. And maybe this is, maybe this is technology this is growth for the future isn't about new things it's about incorporating lots of other things other now bits. now we get things like a tv that will do our internet and then yeah, it will do so it you know, smart together. smart tv it brings yeah. everything into one box and maybe this is the new h- how technology is going to grow over the next few years because we can't we can't actually do i mean do you need your phone to do much more than it does already no it's pretty much there isn't no, it it'll be something i don't it'll be i don't need it bigger or smaller i don't need it to last longer i just It'd be nice if I had this signal everywhere I went. Got to be honest, good. that'd yeah. be that'd be good. But that's down to that's down to the providers, not the phone. To be honest, um, but yeah, I mean, it does everything I want it to do. Um, so can we actually improve on that much? Probably not. Um, but what we could do is incorporate other things into it. I think what so you come up with a really, really, really good um, point there is um, that's what's happening with businesses, like we're trying to do with Concept Seven and working with the Trend Academy and working with Big Daddy PR. That they've they've taking loads of things that work and put them together they've mm-hmm. had to bring them all together into one and that's kind of what we're doing with businesses they're all services that complement each other and that's what kind of happened with the phone they yeah. put the music yeah. in there they put your photography in there you got everything all in one I mean the, the the average mobile phone now has got a better camera in it than it's most people have ever owned mine has got pretty good cameras yeah, they're awesome they're really good for what, for what they are I mean obviously yeah. you know there's there's other levels of photography of but course, yeah. I mean for, for Joe Public taking a picture and you yeah. know walking around London perfect yeah, um the quality of music that they give out and the volume and things like that amazing yeah and i'm not being funny you can put fifty thousand tracks on one phone right. i mean it's ridiculous have you ever sat there and gone in and you've got like an ipod when they first came out it's like you can get a thousand songs on here and you sit there and you go give out 20 in and you think oh, I, I, well that's a waste of money because <laughs> i don't know more than 22 <laughs> I seem to only know I know, only listen songs. to these two albums. Yeah. yeah, I seem to have got the Eagles on there and Michael Jackson, and that's about it. Yeah, there's no more. It's um, again, things evolved. Now, now mm. you've got the whole world at your fingertips. You can listen to whatever track you want to listen to, or anything that's ever been written in the next ten seconds, can't you? Yeah, it's, it's amazing. amazing. Yeah, yeah, it is absolutely, absolutely amazing. amazing. Like Spotify. So. As well. so, so, to, yeah. so to sit there and say it's probably not going to you know, be about in 12 months' time, <laughs> bit of a mistake there, Alan. Got to be honest. Got to be honest. Yeah, um, yeah I'd um, yeah, retract that one, retract maybe. Retract that one. Yeah, but that, that proves that he doesn't get everything right. No, no, no. Um, most, of these, most of these people don't get everything right. They just, you know, they, they get... They're still making as many mistakes as everybody else. You yeah. know, for every ten mistakes, there's one good idea that makes them a load of money. Well, it? exactly. Yeah. So he, he started off with the computers. Was, is it, I thought it was IBM, but it was Amstrad, isn't it? Amstrad, Isn't yeah. it uh, like that amalgamation of a bit of his name and someone else's name, Amstrad? I'm I'm guessing it probably wasn't him on his own because it no, was it was it like was an instant own. built company, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. But it was um it was basically I think it was taking the technology that other people had designed and his intention was c- to create a computer that every household could afford, mm-hmm. and it was like a vacuum formed plastic thing yeah it wasn't actually there was no 
it didn't look nice or anything like that. I mean, it, did, yeah, it didn't hardly work. Nice. To be yeah. honest, <laughs> it didn't work. you can put your rest your coffee cup on it. <laughs> yeah, that good was for it. that. Yeah. To be honest. Um, so I think it was probably a few different people involved in that. But anyway, I, I mean, that's what he was known for, and um, and yeah, and he's uh, he's another one who's just worked hard, mm. really kept it kept down to earth, consistently for a been, long, long yeah, time. Yeah, I mean, he's been around for a long time as well. Um, so and his show didn't come around until he was in his. Is it fifties? So oh yeah, that's a fairly so. The, like so the Apprentice has been a fairly new thing, hasn't it? That's for really him, been yeah, for yeah. him, yeah. So he's been. What, was he born nineteen forty seven? Forty seven, yeah. Forty seven, yeah. yeah. So he's seventy one years old. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's quite. Apparently, he caused a storm about employing women. Sugar is well known for his opinionated views, but he famously caused a storm with his attitude towards women in the workplace. He insisted that currently current equality laws make it more difficult for women to find jobs claiming the rules that prevent employers from asking job applicants if they plan to have children result in some companies simply throwing away c women's cvs so he was standing up for women they didn't yes. write that yeah, yeah 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 at all they yeah. implied that he was said something bad <laughs> actually he was in standing up for women saying it's hard yeah employers won't employ women because they have a go off and have babies i mean you, as someone who employs people yourself is that something you have to take on board it's not something that you. Yeah, it's not something you worry about, really. Mm. I mean, it's, it's something I, I actually. I mean, to be fair, I know some. So I know somebody has a um, had a news agent store. Yeah. And nice little business. It was him. He used to have a couple of women work for him, and you know, all going really well. Yeah. And then they both fell pregnant at the same time and took a year off. Mm, so, actually, it, I mean. It, <laughs> A bit of clever accounting and went bankrupt and set up again the next day under a different name and right. didn't have to pay him. You know that's what it achieved. It didn't yeah. actually serve its purpose. Right. What what for for the small business? It actually had such an effect on him that he he had, had to, to do that, or he yeah. would have gone bankrupt anyway. Um, so what actually ended up happening through <laughs> these rules that are supposed to help people actually ended up with these two women going off to have babies and not having a job to go back to right, or anything yeah. like that. So yeah. actually had the reverse effect um, of what it was supposed to achieve. Um, it was supposed to give them job security. It was supposed to give the employer, you know, know that that person's coming back and that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it, it finished him off because, you know, he has to pay him and he's got also employ, mm. employ other staff to run run the business. So really in difficult. a small business, really hard. Yeah. I suppose really and when people say things like that, um, in a big business, it's really hard. You imagine someone like Tesco's, the cost of having people off work, not just for having babies, but for anything, sickness yep. and, you yep. know, just days off for, you know, going to family funerals and weddings and that sort of, just all mm. that sort of stuff. The cost of it of course, is, yeah. is, uh, is amazing. And uh, it's, I don't know, it, at some point it's got to stop. Yeah. At some point you cannot, employers cannot keep taking on your responsibility of course you know, if yeah if you if you work for them yeah. you have to have some responsibility to looking after yourself and pr yeah and and, um, and also sort of like arranging things around your work yes not arranging yeah. work around your thing that's it people people live in a world nowadays where they think they're in their they're entitlement they're entitled to take a day off ill whenever they feel like it. Mm. They're entitled to, well, you know, they're entitled to holidays. They're entitled to this. They're entitled to sick pay. They're entitled to all these different things, which is all very nice and a very idyllic world, but businesses cannot afford to keep doing it. Just in the last few years, the um, national living wage has gone up and up and up. Yeah. That's great, but the cost of products is coming down and down. Profit's coming down and down. So the margins Rent is going up. Squeezing. The rates are going up and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. At some point, it's going to do that. Yeah. Uh, well, is it not even at some point. It's already it's happening. Pretty, it's it's much already much happening. happening. You've yeah. got big businesses going under at the moment. Yeah. Big businesses. Debenhams are about to go. Um, yeah. That's what I'm predicting. Um, yeah, yeah. They've, you know, they've, they've launched their third um third scary profit warnings right um now you know that's they've got some big stores but they don't own many of them most of those are rented they, they you know certainly the one local one is is rented mm. who's going to take that store on yeah when that shuts down well i just think the high you streets know? are going to be empty they, they're going to be they're going to so be completely empty, empty. Yeah. the only stores that are surviving at the moment are the ones that are just chucking stuff out the door cheap yeah you know i think they'll be so empty and then people are going to go they're going to start up is there's a lot i see at the moment of coffee shops and hairdressers opening up yes. stuff like that yeah. but what they don't seem to realize is that when the money stops from the jobs 
who can afford to go out for this coffee? This is it. it go who full can afford to go and spend 15 quid on a haircut? No one. So it all comes down. Yeah. It will go full circle. So, so one of the things that people didn't see the effect of in the last um, last little recession we had mm -hmm. was when they stopped building, yeah. and what people um, what people were doing as the money sort of slowed up. So people were looking at things, whereas people might have maybe replaced the carpet and they'll you know let's get a new carpet for the lounge. Yeah. They're, they're now thinking that'll be all right for another few years. Yeah, yeah, you have to dragging it out. So, yeah. so the reverse, you know, the carpet shop struggled. The, yeah. you know, it, it follows all the way down that line. I remember us having a conversation about that guy that bought a, um, I think it was four hundred and fifty thousand pound star for the top of his Christmas tree. Yes. Yeah? yeah, and and there's people out there who do spend that sort of extortionate amount of money on things, but you need them because the guy that made the star made some money and he bought stuff off other mm. people, and it filters all the way down to the guy who cleans the streets, and you yeah. know, uh, you need all of these you people, need the everything people, in between. So you what need. you're saying, you need the people with a lot of money to be spending it. Yes, so you need the people at the top spending it, and it filters down for everybody else, yeah. you know, and everybody benefits from it in a way yeah. so you, without them that the, the system would fall apart so you yeah. have to have these people spend that sort of money um you take away any part of that system yeah and it will collapse mm -hmm. yeah it's not going to work and they it? have and I mean, that it's is like what jenga. started to happen it's like yeah. jenga yeah and you start pulling over taking away those that's a really good example jenga yeah. you start taking away those parts of that tower mm. the thing's going to collapse it's and it's so close it's, it's so so close to toppling over just even trying to start a business in the last two years, you realise that how squeezed people are. That's it's, it's, it's impossible, and everything everything you do mm. costs so much money. Yeah. Rent, rates, electric, all of these things. And then you get some little employee there who can't really be asked to do any work, who mm. wants to go off on holiday for two weeks, mm. um, thinks they're entitled to, you know, you've got to pay them while they're not there. I mean, wh whoever come up with that law? Well, where's where does that fit in with yeah, yeah. sensible? Yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, you know, why should I, if you if you save up throughout the year so you can afford thing, to it? take two weeks yeah. off work to go on holiday, that's fine. Why should I pay for you to be on holiday? No, I, I do. You know, I, I don't yeah, understand. Yeah, no, no. I don't understand how it ever came about. Well, this is the other thing with minimum wage. Is mm. it, it depends on how the living costs of what you're doing is balanced to what you're earning. You can save enough money See, no, or earn enough money. This is this is another thing which I completely disagree with. Living wage. I, mm. I think you should have people working for whatever. If you, if you want to educate yourself and make yourself worth more money, you'll be able to go and earn it. Well, if, I think if you're not, you if you're not, be... then you're going to end up working yeah, for two pound an hour. Yeah, and I don't think that means ed educate. I think you're right. I think people, when you say education, they think, well, I can't afford to do a degree in a college. Hmm. I'm not talking about that. Educating no, yourself is learning a new how skill. How many salespeople actually sit and watch videos on how to sell stuff? And we've had this conversation learn before skills. as well. Do learn the skills. To There's to so much. Stuff. The information is out there for you yeah. to learn it. Learn the skills. Make yourself worth more money. But what happens is these people just. What what would happen if we didn't have a living wage? I don't think it should ever have been bought in. I don't think the minimum wage should have been bought in. Um, what would happen is everything would find its correct level. Because mm -hmm. if you're employing people at £2 an hour, you'd end up with, basically you'd be employing people that are crap at the job, wouldn't you? That's would. basically what would happen. Yeah. If you employed a plumber and he well, charged you'd too, £2 you'd an hour, you'd, you'd probably going to have some issues. And also yeah? they wouldn't turn up. They yeah, and they're not going to turn up. They don't want to be there. Yeah. There's not enough there to give. So basically, your business would suffer by not paying the right amount of money. Of so you would have yeah. to up how much you pay yes. to get the decent members of staff, mm. yeah, and to get the people that are going to keep your business running. Those people would be able to demand a sensible amount of money mm -hmm. um, by putting in a, this rule where right everyone gets ten pound an hour, or everyone gets you know, wh whatever. Um, you alienate the ones who weren't very good at the job. So you have to then come up with all of these apprenticeships and all these, just give them new titles so that these people have got a chance of getting a job. Yeah. Um, and you, the people who should have been on more money, they go on £10 an hour to subsidise the people who should be on eight. Yeah. You know, and there's so many yeah. businesses out because there. As soon as that national living wage came in, so many businesses that openly said, "I we just got rid of some staff. Everybody else is now going to have to work harder. Yeah. You know, when, when did it come in? It, well, it came in. Uh, minimum wage came in a f quite a while ago now. Yeah. But national living wage, which was introduced sort of year before last, or oh, was year it? before that actually. Oh, okay. Um, and it was slowly introduced, depending on size of business and things. Mm -hmm. But it's it's um, for a small business, be a killer. 
Yeah. You know, if someone's if, if if someone's sitting there earning you nine pound an hour and you're paying them seven pound an hour, depending on what your margins are. Yeah, yeah. And then suddenly the government turn and say, "Ah, we think everybody should be paid ten pound an hour." What, well, because well, uh, what they're also saying at the same time, because uh, it has effect. Sorry, has an effect on on the amount that. You're, you're not just paying the staff, you're paying for the lights, the, mm -hmm. the rates and everything else. Yeah. But if you're paying them more, you're going to have to put your prices up. Therefore, more people can't afford to shop at your shop. Therefore, everything gets squeezed yeah. because there's no money trickling down from the top. And that just seems to be the problem. There's no money trickling from the top. It's, it's there's people so like deep. Richard Branson, who's billionaires, and then there's people who are earning £10 an hour, £7 an hour, £7.80 an hour, whatever the minimum wage is now. now. That gulf is the problem. Yes. It's not trickling down anymore. Yeah, it's not. It's, and it's not. Um, I think it is trickling down. It's it's, it's in a different way. I mean, it's, it's okay. just how things evolve and how things are changing. Um, there's a lot of internet millionaires earning a lot of money out of the internet who are, you know, they're they're earning the money that all of those local little shops used to earn. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I'm a great believer in local shops. I'm a massive great believer. believer in local shops. Um, I would I would stop ordering from Amazon and moaning that it's not here two days later when yeah. it's for sale at the end of the road. And all you had to do was walk up there and get it. Yeah. You know, if you're that worried about price, the way because it's two quid cheaper on Amazon or mm. something like that, then put up with the fact that it didn't turn up. Um, mm. You know, people if people who buy stuff off Amazon because it's five pound cheaper and then take a day off work to wait for it to turn. I mean, yeah. come on, people, think about what you're doing. No, um, right, yeah. Good and uh, yeah, but so so while they're pushing up the national living wage and saying let's make everybody you know let's pay that person there who only owns that company eight pound an hour let's pay them ten pound an hour and dictate how much you got to pay. At the same time, they're dictating you, you now got to pay the pension for them. Mm. You're going to do that as well, and you're going to pay national insurance, which is going up. And you're mm. going to pay all this sort of stuff. You know, VAT is going up. Your rates are going to go up. Electrics now being you know taxed more, and the f cost of electrics gone up. The cost of your water's gone up. The cost of you and know all these point, things. My, my point is, is, it has to be. If the money's going up, the money's going up. Like so, if the price is going up. Money's going up. So you're sending mm. it up the, the Ar pyramid arti artificially. To the top. Artificially, you're pushing everything up, yeah. and you're going to sit there and kid yourself that you've dealt with debt and or national debt and things like that. You haven't. You've just pushed everything up a bit. Yeah. So, so it's just on a bigger scale. Um, and I, I just, I don't agree with it. I don't agree with the way it's all going. I think it's, um, it's going to end in tears. It, and I don't think it's very long. Like no. we were saying no. around here, I mean, there's so many buildings around here with flats empty, shops empty. Mm -hmm. This is Norwich. This place was a great place to be ten years ago. And it's still nice now, but yeah, it no, might no. not be in ten years' time. Yeah. Everywhere's starting to look a little bit like bloody um, where's that? Where's that place Eminem comes from? <laughs> Can't remember his name now. <laughs> Eight Mile. Eight Mile. Yeah. Detroit. <laughs> Detroit. Yeah, it is. And Detroit was a classic example. Yeah. It yeah. Used to be Ford, didn't it? It was mm. built in Detroit, and they just it just the manufacturing just got shipped out. Detroit just fell apart, and everybody, every place is starting to look like Detroit. It's well, to be to be Shit fair, off. we don't exactly the same. So Norwich Union was in Norwich, had all the nice big buildings in yeah. Norwich and everything. They built one socking great big unit out on the business park. Everybody moved out there, and you've got all these buildings in Norwich, mm. which nobody wants to spend any money on. No, I mean, you, I mean, Angler Square is prime, prime example. Anybody that knows Norwich will know Angler Square. There is acres upon acres of unused NHS buildings, yeah. which there's multi-story car parks that nobody can go in because they're falling apart. Oh yeah, there's, huge, um, huge buildings. Nobody wants to invest any money in it. Uh, who wants to invest yeah. hundreds of million pounds in the middle of Norwich at the moment sure. when, you know, there's there's properties being built and no one's living in them. Yeah. There's because they can't afford them. I know. There's, so why are they building more and more flats? I, I, I don't I don't ever understand no. the mentality of you haven't sold that one yet. Why do you want to build another one? Any um, sense. And why like down the riverside here, there's a pokey little flat that's that's going to be a thousand pound a month mm -hmm. and it's tiny. Yeah. And anywhere else you would get a nice house for that. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a pokey because it's on Riverside and you, they've got a little gate at the front. Gate community looks a bit posh from the outside. Inside, <laughs> you can swing a cab. Doesn't make well, any it. sense. But people, people jump on them. People with that sort of like thing, London people go on. I, th I think it's, and this is one of the things where people are spending their money nowadays, and it's how things change. I think a lot more people worry about that sort of thing. A lot of people worry about the look of where they live. Yes. A lot of people want the, I don't know, IKEA lounge furniture yeah. and they want to be going out for coffees and they want to be having their hair done once a week and yeah. they want to be i mean how I, I i can't understand it used to be every village used to have one hairdressers yeah 
How can you have five hairdressing songs in one little village it's nowadays? Rough. You know, no, no, no. Not even in Norwich, every street you go down, there's there's pretty much there's ten. Yeah, I mean, it's ha- ludicrous. There's, there's, there can't be that many people having their hair cut. Sure, well, clearly there is. But I just don't understand why society has changed in such a way that everybody wants to go and get their hair cut so often. I, do, I just well, don't understand. People are far more um, yeah, image conscious, but not to that extent. Yeah, It just seems a bit bizarre to me. And then are we are we giving everybody this pay rise and putting everybody on a national living wage of £10 an hour so they can go and buy a coffee for £4.50? Yeah. If you were that desperate for a coffee, for just... A quid. Yeah. Like yeah. the only time one I'll buy one is from Prep for a quid. Yeah, but even um, that's a quid. You can buy a jar of coffee for a quid. Yeah, you can. That's you know, me so splashing that's out. Why, 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 when when that many people are having their hair cut once a week and buying five cups of coffee a yeah. day at four quid? Yeah. Why do we need a national living wage? No, they're no. clearly okay. To be fair, absolutely fine. You know. Yeah. So and, and what we're doing is alienating that small ten percent of people who really do need. Yeah. the extra help and the extra money and, and that seems to be what we always do yeah. you know we, we have the Disability Act comes in and then we we sort of give it to everybody you know people who you know cut their finger off once yeah. you know I need a car you know uh, it, it's uh, yeah. we seem to give it to everybody who just wants to fill in the form and then six years later it's like oh it's costing too much let's this do away my, with it my, it'll be like, it won't be a, a very popular thing to say but this is my problem with the mental health mm-hmm. thing everyone's saying I've got mental health well, everyone's got fucking mental health issues Every fucking person yeah, really. on the planet, and uh, but what really annoys me is that that is what's the product of it is mm. that everybody's getting signed off for something that actually is not a sign offable thing. Every not everybody, but a lot of people will, are are playing up to it or believing in it or saying they've got something wrong. With them. I don't believe uh, everyone's got mental health issue. Everybody on the planet, but it doesn't mean you can't work. Yeah, I mean I'm a prime example for that. I've got no esophagus for God's sake, and I still get up and go to work every day. I don't miss days. And I can't eat properly. So you just learn to live around your issue. Yeah. And if you've got blooming like that Nick Vornicek, who's got no arms and legs, can go around the world speaking, why are you off for a minor bout of depression? You might be better getting out and meeting people. Getting out and doing stuff and doing something about it. And that's where the money's going. It's people need to start stepping up and going, what am I doing to contribute? It's back to that entitled thing. You're entitled. You're entitled to sit and do nothing because because some doctor has actually turned around and said, you're depressed. Mm. That's it. You're entitled to sit and do nothing. Take some tablets um, and society will look after you. And we tell people this. We tell people this from a very early age that don't worry. When it, when, you know, as soon as that happens, you haven't got to work anymore. We'll give you, we'll give you a car. We'll give you some, mm. you know, and, and, and they've had to do stuff about that because so many people are abusing the system. But, uh, you know, you've got to feel sorry for the 10% that desperately, not, need desperately, it, yeah. desperately need it. Desperately need it. But, you know, it's been a blanket. I mean, I, I know they say about means testing. That Means testing is the person who shouts the loudest. That's means testing, I'm afraid. It um, the yeah, cause the most wheel, isn't cause, it? Cause the most fuss, yeah. you, you'll get through. Yeah. The, the, the person that's truly depressed isn't going to cause fuss. No. It's just going to say, oh, well, I don't get my money anymore. I won't bother going to the doctors. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, that's the mm. scary thing about it. And those people are the ones who need the help. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's, it's the rest of them that balls it out for everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Balls mm. it out for them. And that's in, in, in everything. Mm. You know, the, the, the 10% of 20% of the staff who think it's okay not to turn up for work every day, they're the ones that mean that the company can't pay you a sensible amount of money because yeah. we have to employ we have to employ 20% more staff just to make up for people who can't be asked to come to work. Yeah, yeah? The people who want to go on holiday five times a year and think they're entitled to take time off whenever, whenever they want. Yeah. You know, and you've got a company who has to employ two or three extra people just to cover staff holidays. But that's when the that's psych- where the money's It's going. down to the psychology and people taking responsibility for themselves. Yeah, just people. And it's about yeah, pointing it out and man going because if you went to someone and say, "Look, yeah, it is about man up," and it's like if you went to someone like, "Right, if you don't come in for this and this day, you are affecting the bonuses of these people. Mm-hmm. Therefore, they don't get their money yep. because there isn't enough people in the shop to to hit your target. That's right? it. Not That's me it. lowering the target; it's a target. I'm not going to push the target closer to you because you can't be asked to stand up. It's That's just it. like yeah. you, you need to be here, and you're affecting other people. Then they'll turn around and go, well, it's bullying in the workplace, isn't it? <laughs> yes, I'm entitled not to put up with this. Yeah. Yeah. You, so know, you can't talk to I'm actually, like what I'm going to do now is going to take some time off with depression. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that's, yeah, yeah. and that is, that's the world we live in, mate. Looking at your it's own the world we live in. Just, fucking, just man up, yeah. sort out your own behavior, Grow and up. start taking some bloody responsibility yeah. for yourself and stop teaching our kids they don't need to take responsibility. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. You don't need to give them a medal for fifth place. No. No. They Doesn't didn't matter. come first. Yeah. They're shit at running. Tell them. Yeah. yeah. They're still Go and running in the race. has been over yeah. 50 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. You're actually chasing them yeah. to give them a badge. 
Don't give them a bag. Time to start manning up and yeah. training every day so you get better at what exactly. you're doing. It's yeah. method. And, and that's what people need to do. The amount of people that class themselves as a whatever. Oh, yeah. I'm a, I don't know, retail salesperson. But yeah. n- but never invest any time, money or anything in learning learning their trade. Yeah. yeah. And I'll, um, I'll be the first to say that, like, I didn't. When I was younger, I never thought about things like that in my early 20s. Mm. I was lazy, lazy in my mind, lazy. I weren't trying to push myself. I was too airy fairy, wanted an, an easy kind of, not an easy life, but I wanted this otherworldly life that didn't really exist. And actually, that's that allowed me not to sort of take responsibility. In, and that, you grow out of that, hopefully. You're supposed to grow out of it because w- in our generation, it wasn't hammered into us the whole time through mm. growing up. Um, I'm afraid nowadays it pretty much is just hammered into everybody. That'd be okay. You're entitled. Mm. Yeah, you're in, you're entitled to everything. Yeah, um, and don't let anybody tell you you're not, because if they do, they're racist, fascist. They're yeah, yeah. yeah. So as soon as somebody turns around and says "man up" and fucking get on with it, mm. you know, because I will quite happily say when I coach athlete, athletes mm. and they go, "Oh well, I won't win." Train harder then. Yeah. If you're already in the mindset you're not going to win, you're not going to win, yeah. right? But what you really need to do, if you if you seriously aren't going to win because you're not fit enough, go and get fitter. Yeah. Yeah. What can I do about it for you? Well, you, well, like, yeah, I Yeah. About? Why are you whinging about it? Go yeah. and do something about it. Become fitter, become faster, become better. Yeah. Watch what they're doing. See what they're doing wrong, improve yeah. on it. Yeah. yeah. But you're not allowed to say that to what kids is this anymore. This I'm not allowed to stand thing, there and say it? that to a kid because they sit there yeah. and they go crying to their mum. Yeah. You told my daughter she's shit. Yeah, she came 12. <laughs> <laughs> out, <laughs> of, out of 11. <laughs> <laughs> out of 11. I don't know how she accomplished that, but she did. Um, and yeah, I told her, you know, if she wanted to get better, she had to train harder. Yeah. And you can't tell them that. You're what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to give them a medal for coming yeah. for trying. For trying, but yeah. Say, well done for trying. It's really good. Maybe next week you put a little bit more effort in. Maybe. Maybe. Do you want to? You know. <laughs> um, and, yeah. you know, and they cry off to their parents and the parents come over. And, yeah. the, and the parents tell them as well. Parents say, oh, no, you sh- nobody should talk to you like that. Yeah, they should. Because mm. you were shit. Yeah. Um, but it's it's... Obviously, it's not that bad, but, no, that's but it, as mean, an yeah. example, yeah, that's, that's how it is. You're not allowed to tell them that they're not doing well. You're not allowed to tell them that they need to work harder. What you have to say to them is, it'll be all right. Mm. That'll be okay. Mm. You'll, you'll be all right. There, there. Um, and that's just where we end up. You end up with a sluggish You end society. up with a society of people that don't really like. want to work, yeah. but when they do, they expect a £1,000 an hour for yeah. it because they want to be able to shop at Ikea, have their hair cut once a week, mm. and buy coffee at £4.50 a cup whenever they want one, um, and then complain they haven't got enough money to live on. And you end up with a bunch of people online pretending to be coaches with actually just a Facebook page. Yeah, and, and an Instagram page. Well, it comes back to this: what, is a, w- what is a business? What is a business? What is this person actually doing for you? What is this? What 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 problem are they solving? Um, the best coaching advice self. I'll give you: coaching advice, right? Best yeah. coaching advice I'd ever give anybody: get your bank statement out, go through it, and decide where all that money went. Yeah, where you, is it going? Yeah, where's all this money yeah. going? Because so most f- for what's most five people, times seven. I'm terrible at maths. What's what? What's five times seven? Was, uh, do I have to answer seriously? Thirty-five. Yeah. Yeah. Thirty-five. So thirty-five times four. So that's sort of 70, 140 quid. <laughs> Just takes me a little bit longer, did you? I'm good at drawing. Um, so 140 quid a month you're spending on coffee. Yeah. 140 quid a month yeah. on coffee for yeah. five pounds a day. And what people, and maybe a what people don't realise, I, I remember when my parents bought their first house. They were both working full-time jobs during the day. They were both doing evening work and they were, <laughs> one of the jobs my parents literally used to do. And this is just to make ends meet, mm-hmm. you know, back in 1970. Right, they used to get you had to get these little jiffy bags, and they had to put tea bags and sugar yeah. and a little milk and a little spoon mm-hmm. and a in uh, for airplanes. Yeah, and they yeah, used yeah. to sit and they'd sit and bag all this stuff up. And mm. I used to do, I used to help them, and yeah. you know, and that was the sort of stuff people done to be able to afford to live. Yeah. Nowadays, people want to. Oh, I only really want to do sixteen hours a week, but I still expect to have a seven hundred pound mobile phone. I want yeah. Sky TV. Ridiculous. I want broadband. Yeah. I want a fifty inch plasma TV. Um, and and that's what they think they're entitled yeah. to. Yeah. It's like you're not. You don't work hard enough to have yeah. any of that. Get rid of all of that. You don't and work need harder. It. You don't need it. I always say to Sam, Sam's like, oh, we could like she was talking about locking through to the next house last week. She and I was like, Sam, we can only be in one room at a time. Mm. I've I've lived in bed sits. It didn't really bother me. It wasn't pleasant, but it wasn't that bad. I like I don't understand it. You've got two people in a house and you want twelve yeah, bedrooms. You want. You, yeah. I, I can live in uh, I could live in a room. 
It's, it's, I, it's a standard. I, 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 you know, again, well, you, sort me, of, you, set, you set a standard of where I, you want to live. If in, I want like, more rooms, I'd, I'd want them for purpose. Yeah. I'm a very purpose. Like, yeah. I, I want stuff for yeah. purpose. I don't need, I'll only buy a camera if I want to do, if it has a function on it I need for the filming. I only like things for purpose or I feel like wasting mm -hmm. my money. Yes. So if I have a room yeah. there sitting, it annoys me that the room's empty. I'm like, why bother? That's, that's do, me. Do I'm do not saying it's right or wrong. I'm no, just saying it's my psychology. No, but do you know what? That goes back to what I just said about the best coaching advice you'd ever give anybody is mm. exactly that. Do you need it? No. When, whenever you look at it, so when you go in and you look at that £4.50 cup of coffee, yeah. do you need it? Yeah. Really? Yeah. You really need a £4.50 cup of coffee? Because mm. that coffee shop never used to be there and you never, you didn't have coffee. You had a couple of cups of instant coffee throughout the day. Yeah, yeah? Yeah. Now people are having 12, 15 cups of coffee a day because mm. um, it's made by some machine that claims to be from France. I mean, come yeah. on, it's, it's, do you really need it? No. And if you went for your bank statement and looked at everything on your bank statement, do you really need it? Yeah. There was a time where people were having to work very, very hard just for basic needs. Yes. People now want all of the extras and want to work less, and that yeah. is where it is slowly going to just topple it's over. Just, it's got to. Yeah. How long can how long can the work? The, well, the only way the world can survive is by the government turning around and saying, "No, you have to pay this amount of money." Mm. That's the only way it can survive, and um, that that can only last so long. Well, I think what, what's going to happen is that the majority, the ninety nine percent of the the country, are going to have nothing. And the one percent are going to control. I have everything else what happens because you need it what they've got I don't, and, and yeah. it just seems that you've got your own you've only got yourself to blame I don't know where it can end I don't know I mean it's just it's, at the moment it's going in completely the wrong direction um, I've just, I, I'm just i like genuinely concerned over the next five years of where businesses can be mm -hmm. because well businesses won't well, they won't be they I won't. don't understand how people are going to earn money are you going to end up back in a factory survive. shoving stuff down a line Factory line. I went. Well, problem is, I went to petrol station yesterday and got some petrol. My car's ad blue, so you have to put that ad blue stuff in. Mm -hmm. The company that make it gone bankrupt. Oh, so now you. Well, you know, so the company that was supplying Shell petrol stations with this yeah, ad yeah. blue stuff had gone bankrupt. So what do you do with your car? Well, I've got. I've clearly going to have to go to a different petrol station other than Shell. I only use Shell because I've got a card for it, but sure, yeah. I'm going to have to go to a different petrol station to get it. But if if these companies can go bankrupt. Mm that supply a necessity because my car won't start once it runs out it just yeah. won't run um and how's that been allowed to happen doesn't how, say how's that anybody it. let that yeah. happen why didn't they put the price up a while ago i i can't tell you, you know, it doesn't make any sense to me and like it's scary a big companies like yeah. mcdonald's not mcdonald's they're still going um, toys, r us. toys r us are going yeah. down and you think what chance has anyone else got that's it if, the, if, if companies out there that have been around for so long with such a um, such a high percentage of proportion of that industry can go bankrupt. And yeah, what mm. chance? But maybe that's the other. Maybe that's the other answer. Maybe that's the other way the world needs to go. Hundreds of little businesses it's rather than one big to. business. Maybe that's that's a good yeah. thing. Um, but to do that, you've got to make it easier to start a business. Yeah. You know, having a business nowadays, first little thing that goes wrong. You know, legal fees, things like that. Mm. Ridiculous. You absolutely can't keep ridiculous. Suing everyone. Well, that's the way it is, though. Yeah, you end up with a bunch of lawyers and no one with any else money. Yeah, and you, uh, well, the other pro the other problem there is you end up with people that are scared to offer their services. So you mm. end up, what's going to end up happening with um, and you know something that's you know, recent and in the news is like Hillsborough disaster and the police are now yeah. being dragged through as for manslaughter and that sort of thing, which I don't know all details about, so I'm not getting involved in that. But yeah. what will end up happening is when there's a big football match on, the police will say, no. So it's more and more control. You want me, you, you police, you you want the police to come down there and man it, and then when something goes mm. wrong, you're gonna yeah. t you're gonna do me for manslaughter. Yeah. I think we're better off just staying, staying out of the way. Out, yeah. You'll have to employ private security. Yeah, yeah. And then private security will turn around and say, "Well, we ain't doing it. Yeah, we don't. That. We don't want that hassle." Yeah. Um, so then, what happens? <laughs> you, it's just, and and that's the way it will go because yeah. people can't take responsibility. Really, in situations like that, what you need to be doing is going after all the people that's fucking stormed in there and crushed everyone. That's who you need to be going after. All the yeah. people that could turn up there without tickets, and yeah. that's my point of view on it. No, no, agree. You know, the decisions well, 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 were made at the time under stress and under, yeah. you know, under duress. But you know, if an ambulance worker turns up an accident, tries to save someone's life and makes a mistake, yeah, right? Are you telling me that person would be better off if they'd never turn up? Of course, you know, be dead as well. Um, and what will end up happening is people would just turn around and say, "I don't want that job. I don't want yeah. a job as a school teacher because yeah. the first time I accidentally." brush against some kid yeah. who's going to claim I sexually assaulted him. Yeah, yeah. I just won't, you know, and yeah, you'll, you'll run, out, you'll run out of school teachers. You got, like, People just won't want to be in that situation. Youth work was the same. It was yeah. getting to the point where you just couldn't be doing any youth work. No. 
it's no. pointless. What's the, what's the point? Absolute pointless. You know, and it's and it, it's it's a scary world that we're creating, mm. and I don't know where it's going to end. And I'm sure you know somebody would have wonderful answers for all of this, but possibly it's Alan Sugar. Possibly Alan Sugar. Yeah, I mean, so we started with Alan Sugar. We did, we? but it's been good though. We went we <laughs> went mean, off on one, but I think Alan, if you've got the any ideas, you say off on one. You know, it's the, nearly an hour. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's, 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 it's good. It's fine. It's good. The conversation takes you there. So, guys, this is um, but, yeah. How to Build Your Own Rome. We were talking about Alan Shearer earlier on. Alan Shearer? Sugar. Sure. Alan Shearer is a football player. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Yeah, it's good we mentioned football. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Alan Shearer earlier. Um, we are successful.com. We are passionate about safety of development. Um, head over to successful.com. Look at everything we do there, all the articles there. We've also got Mindshift magazine that comes out every month. You can subscribe that for free. Um, we are successful global on all social media websites. So, um, Follow us and we will see you next week. Cheers, guys. Take care.